Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Bob JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. It's a Monday. This is March the 2nd. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 36. And I'm here with my best artist friends, Diana and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. And hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm glad you two was able to join me. Well, the uh, recommended video was for the theme of uh, art consultants. And what prompted me to uh, pick that theme was, I think it was in episode 34, where the discussion was uh, Sergio Gomez uh, triangle or pyramid uh, theory of your art career, <clears throat> in which case, he uh, said that the very top of the pyramid was where your art consultants and your art dealers and your serious uh, high-level collectors are at. We discussed, well, none of us have reached any of those folks, but we do have the opportunity. Uh, part of the uh, Paul Klein's course that we took, he uh, held several interviews with movers and shakers in the art market. And one of the individuals was Susan Blackman. She is an art consultant. And it was a very good interview. And she brought up some very interesting points in dealing with uh, art con- with artists and as an art consultant. So this kind of all uh, was in my mind and kind of all pulled together. So it would be an excellent theme uh, for us to uh, discuss. So, Diane, you got a chance to uh, watch the video, right? Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting when she was talking about how she finds her artists and basically she finds them everywhere and anywhere. And, you know, she searches online and she gets, you know, people, uh, artists send her um, their information and she doesn't necessarily um, work with just established artists. It's pretty much anybody that's um, emerging from, from emerging all the way through established artists. And it really depends on what their, her clients are looking for to hang in their spaces. So it, it could vary, you know, and their budgets too. So that was pretty interesting. It's like, it was, it's a pretty good uh, it, it made, connection. It, it made me feel really, really good that, hey, you know, we might have an opportunity to reach that, that top of that pyramid you know, at a high level. Constance, what did you get out, out of the video? I, I liked it because she um, she talked about, you know, 
taking everybody. She goes to art galleries whenever she's out of town. She goes, she gets emails and she, I mean, she stores all that information pretty much in her head and stuff, but then she also remembers, you know, keeps the files and stuff on it. So she sees something she likes, she decides to use it. She'll use it. She's not like you said, but also they were talking about, um, the painting under pseudo pseudo names for yeah. people. She, she had one artist who painted that way because her art, she did two kinds of, she did some other one kind of art and then she did abstracts and she didn't want to show them together. So she went painted under a pseudo name to put the abstracts out. And I was thinking about doing something like that for, because I like to paint in two different styles. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, and it, you know, it's a little bit of extra expense because you got two websites and two, two mailing lists and whatnot, but still that's a, that's a very viable option. You know, that was, it was a, it was a good, idea. Yeah, you know, good idea. Yeah. I I'll have to help me come up with a name. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's you're going to be on your own now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll call you. We'll call you. Uh, call you Blondie of the Plains. There you go. No, it's not blonde. It's gray. <laughs> it's white. <laughs> Whitey of the Plains. <laughs> no, I was thinking about using a man's name because Whitey without... Plains. There you go. <laughs> huh? Whitey Plains. <laughs> Whitey Plains. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. Whitey Plains. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you become That's funny. Rich and famous, we'll have to make sure that you uh, you give us uh, here in the, uh, our artist friends podcast. You give us credit now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's called Whitey Plain, huh? <laughs> oh, brother. oh gosh, that's funny. But yeah, yeah but... what I liked about with the the she was very personable in the vi in the video. Of course, on the, the interview was taken back in 2012, and before I recommended her video, you know she. Uh, she gave her her uh, website address out, so I double checked to make sure her, her website was still active. Yes, she is still active, and uh, I think she's added one other uh, uh, service that she does do uh, coaching now. And as to where 2012, oh, okay. I guess she didn't do any coaching, but uh, it was her her website was pretty much. She had during the interview, she talked about you know I guess uh, entering in the the health. Uh, industry she was just getting into that and i guess that's now pretty much part of her uh, forte so if you go to her to her website you can uh, you get all that, all that information just go for our listeners to make it easy uh visit the uh www.talkartpodcast.com that's talkartpodcast.com and i have her links to her website email address and everything uh, posted there and if you're interested in uh, want to watch the video you know so you know what we're talking about um sergio gomez pretty much was almost the same thing in fact it was his video that prompted me to uh, select the theme of the uh, art consultant so what do you think about sergio's uh, talk uh, diane um he talks about that too like working with art consultants and um I'm trying to remember his, he, didn't he say that it was a big part of how he got his start working with an art consultant? Yeah, I and, think, um, yeah, he uses his, his self as important. an example to start a gallery up and everything that, you know, started afterwards through working through a consultant, you know, and um, pretty much the thing that, that <laughs> is um, what I found interesting with both of them, and that is, uh, was, um, uh, what's the word uh, demystifying you know we think uh these people in the art world uh they're uh, they're unreachable they're you know up there in the upper echelon the upper level and we're just uh, you know emerging artists and you know nobody knows who we are they wouldn't be interested but that's quite differently at least in both of these videos they express it no they are very much interested in the uh, emerging artists they just don't want to receive phone calls and <laughs> and pestering. <laughs> you can't come across to them as a, like a used car salesman. Hey, buy my art. Hey, look at my art. It doesn't well, work. Yeah. yeah, and they want. I mean, they want to work with somebody that's going to act professional and and follow through and you know 
be a professional, not somebody that's kind of haphazard and <laughs> here, there, and everywhere and <laughs> hard to get a hold of and hard to work with. They yeah. want somebody that's easy to work with. Especially you know, if, if they decide to work with you. Most, most yeah. certainly, you know, you have to and take on a professional attitude, but they, both of them, you know, invited you to, uh, invited the watcher, the listeners to, uh, send an email, uh, to them introduction and, uh, with a link to your website, you know, and what I like, what, uh, Susan mentions is your website, you have to have your images where they're right click clickable, where you take your mouse, you can right click on and save it to your desktop. There's too many artists are afraid of, you know, people are going to steal their images off of the internet. <laughs> so, cause she said when she, uh, looks at, at a, an artist website, and that's a secondary thing too. make sure you have to have a website as a working artist. You know, she will, um, look, look, look at their website. And if she sees an image that she thinks a client may be interested in, she wants to save that so she can send that, you know, to a client. But if she can't save it, she says, you're gone. You're already out of, you know, out of mind because, uh, she moves on. Yeah. They're cause they are, they are very busy. They're very busy people. And as far as my thinking is why not, why not make it e as easy as possible? My God, don't, don't put, put that extra barrier up. And if they take the time to look at your website, make it easy for them, you know, and, like in uh, one of Sergio's videos, he's talking about, you know, he says, uh, put yourself out there. You never know when that uh, opportunity is just around the corner. He said, don't give up, you know, stay persistent. And that's what this is, you know, that's what, that's what this is about. And these interviews bear that out. They, uh, they prove that, uh, you got any other comments you want to, you want to add about this or. Well, I think it's good to go back and listen to these podcasts and watch these videos because, you know, when we were in the class, it seemed like there was so much coming at you to begin with that you don't always absorb everything. And so, and maybe in a later stage, you know, a year later from these classes, um, you might be more receptive to a video that you heard before that you weren't ready to hear all that information yet, you know, so. Absolutely. And I'm going to give, you know, I give uh, Paul Klein full credit. If you folks go to um, kleinartistworks.com, you'll see what we're talking about. All He has over 200 some uh, videos, interviews of the art, the art market, the art movers, movers and shakers. He's got artists, art dealers, art collectors, art creators, the art business. And he also has, if you want, you can take the course absolutely free he ended up putting up uh diane did you see that he put our course or kw no, kw yeah they're all up there <laughs> the course that we were in that we met oh, are the 20 <laughs> are the 22s up yet no he just he just he just put 21 up he just i don't know why he selected ours but uh <laughs> <laughs> he's got all 10 sessions <laughs> oh god i know <laughs> <laughs> so if some of our listeners want to see what we go we, back and watch those <laughs> yeah so we'll see, what, see what we look like we're in there but along with a whole bunch of other people about 25 of us i think it was in that course yeah in that class <laughs> we're all in the little the little square little post stamp size videos <laughs> and he picks up I, I i just i don't know why but i happened to watch episode seven you know and and uh Part way through, he goes, well, I haven't heard anything from somebody for a while. Diane, you're up next. <laughs> oh, God, he was mad about doing that. Uh, and he made Diane talk. <laughs> he, got him. He, won't, he won't let you sit quiet in the class. I mean, he, he'll let you sit that way for a little while, but. He'll draw you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll attack you. <laughs> back and listen to that. I don't even know. <laughs> it's been a couple of years or so, hasn't it? Two or three know, years? Yeah. Yeah, because we did that one in 2017, the latter part of two, from September through December 2017, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think we've, I think we've all come a long way since then. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh I, I know we have. And that's what's so fun is to go back and look at those and see, <laughs> you know, I was had just decided to uh, launch, you know, a professional career, at, you know, try to pursue a career as a professional artist. So there's stuff 
there were things I just did not even begin to know. And, you know, he had a, a way of bringing it out and, you know, informing. And, and I look back at uh, the things that, uh, that I've uh, achieved since then. And it's like, Oh my God, it's remarkable. You know, <laughs> as I've said before, you two have been a major asset. You two have helped me because us meeting there, you know, every week we're kind of, we're, we're motivating each other and inspiring each other and we joke and we kid around and we set up, we set our week off each, each week in a uh, creative mode. And, um, uh, I know we're all, we're all making progress. And, uh, and Paul Klein is a, is a, is a, we want to say the guru or the godfather. Yeah. <laughs> He he started it, and now we've we've, we've uh, adopted other folks. We've adopted Stephen Bauman. We've adopted, of course, you know we've never taken any of their courses, but their material they put enough material out on YouTube and on the internet where you actually, mm -hmm. you you know we we took we took a good course to get our head right, to establish our our uh, our, our strategy, and our and our goals, and then we supplemented with with other material because we knew what we needed to what we need to look for, you know, and that, that's, what's important about these things. And, uh, you know, I, I've met other artists that have uh, taken different, they're taking like one course after another over year after year, and they don't seem to make progress. Well, they, you, you've got to sit down and pick one particular goal or strategy and then implement, implement, Put yeah, the implementation is the hard part because yeah. it after the classes are over, you need to put all that you've learned into practice. Otherwise, you don't get anywhere. I mean, a lot of the different classes, they tell you basically the same kind of things, a lot of them. Yep. I mean, but, you know, maybe one person puts it in a slightly different way and you hear it better for some reason or you're more receptive to it at that point. And all of a sudden it makes sense to you and it clicks, you know, so it's, I don't know, a lot of, sometimes you need to hear things over and over for it to finally sink in, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, when you have that aha moment. <laughs> yeah. Go, oh, yeah, okay. Now That's it makes sense. what they sense. were talking about. <laughs> exactly what you said earlier, Constance, when you said, you know, at the time when you're watching the videos, taking the course, it may not sink in, but when you go back and look at it, then all of a sudden, like you said, then you have the aha moment. You know, I, I, that's, yeah. And, and it just pretty much depends on where you are in your art career. I mean, because I've, I've pretty much gone from making jewelry back to painting. And uh, I don't, I just need to sell the jewelry that I have or, because I don't see, it just doesn't, I don't know. I just like painting more. You know, <laughs> I always have. But, yeah. And now I have to redirect myself into you know, painting mode. So. But a lot of these, the interviews and things you watch, you see them multiple times and every time you watch them, you're in a different place and your head's somewhere else and you, 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 you hear the same thing over and over and you think, what else can I get from this? But you do get other things because yeah. one thing is not important to you at the time that you listen to it first and then you listen to it again and that thing, you know, hits you. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm ready for that one now. <laughs> so it's like you keep yeah. learning from the same information over and over. I decided to, uh, to continue uh, meeting after the course had completed. The basic framework was just like what the court, you know, he would, uh, Paul would, uh, would send us an email out with the recommended videos. Of, his, of course, at that time he had a protected site. You know, we had a password. It was just for our, the course. And, uh, we were expected to watch, you know, two or three videos. And then when we, when we met, then we would discuss it and he would, you know, uh, uh, motivate us and, 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 uh, draw us out. And so, uh, that basic framework, you know, I kept except for, mm -hmm. for, you know, using, you know, uh, videos from YouTube and other as a basis for, you know, for our discussion. And, uh, now that we, he's, uh, made, he's posted those videos on this, on his site for the general public to use. And this is a, a wealth of material, you know, yeah, there's a wealth of information in those yeah. a wealth of information. So as far as I'm concerned, this is like, we are, we are 
we are now pursuing the graduate level of the Paul Klein. <laughs> <laughs> we are the graduates. <laughs> Well, and yeah, I mean, we've come far. I mean, it's been three years, right? So yeah. we've come farther than we were at that point. So a lot of the things we may have seen then didn't mean anything to us then. But now seeing mm -hmm. them later, it's something we need. So it's like, you know, it's, it can be important even if we've seen the things already, even if we've seen the videos already. Yep, so. absolutely. You know, and, uh, and it, yeah. Like he, he put a link up there that says if you want to if you want to follow the course, then uh, he he uh, he posted the complete layout with the you know recommended so you could go through and actually uh, pursue the course and have the wealth and uh, uh, motivation and instruction of Paul Klein because obviously you know with each video you know he's the host and it I when I saw that I said oh, that's wonderful. I mean, you know, the, the, the man has given us a def a, a very definite gift to artists around the world. And uh, to our listeners to Artist Friends Podcast, uh, we will, uh, in the future, we we'll certainly be using some of, some of his videos, along with, uh, you know, of course, videos from our good friend, you know, Stefan Bauman, who's kind of like our adopted art teacher, art, you know, in the, in the, uh, actual practice of making art, you know, he's, <laughs> you can't, you can't deny that the man knows what he's talking about. I was listening to one of his videos the other day and he was talking about paintbrushes and I just cracked up laughing because he's talking about, you know, he buys the, the flats and then they eventually work themselves down to brights and, and, uh, different sizes. But he says, one thing I can tell you is once all the fibers are gone from that paintbrush, it's a stick. <laughs> he says, and you don't paint with sticks. <laughs> and he's, that cracked me up when he said that. I see too many people in this class painting with sticks. <laughs> and he's talking about paintbrushes that have like maybe one quarter or less of an inch left on the paintbrush. And I am guilty of having a few paintbrushes. I got a few of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Not to paint with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty too because I remember seeing that video when he's talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. I can remember I teaching the class that. <laughs> and talking about people not buying the right colors for the class. Also, you know, the paint tubes. But I taught a class one time, and these were older ladies who just wanted to learn how to paint for a hobby on once a week, get together and paint, you know. And I would give them the list of supplies to get, and they would invariably show up with only half of the supplies, and they would have to borrow squeezes of tube from each other, of paint from each other to get the colors that they wanted, you know. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, That's funny. right. You know, with all with the internet and with all the materials out there, um, you don't need to go to art school. <laughs> it's there for you, you know, and, uh, it is if you decide you want to do that. I mean, you can, but uh, yeah. today it's just a wealth of information on YouTube. I mean, anything you want to really learn how to draw or paint, you can pretty much go to YouTube and find out how to do it. You Absolutely. Know? And yeah, you know, artists are just so lucky today the materials the materials that are available the uh information that is available the opportunities that are available the only gatekeeper folks is yourself in your mind yeah. you are the gatekeeper when you sit back i get so frustrated when i encounter a young artist and you know i'm telling them about the the things that i'm doing and everything he says well how'd you uh how how, how? i said we mean how how i just did it okay i pursued it and i went at it I said, and there's nothing unique about me you can do it too get off your butt you just have to be willing to put your time into it that's yeah. the thing Fair how enough. much as that goes back to the gary v videos that's exactly when gary spending your t spending your time wisely i mean if you want to take the two days off on the weekend to be with your family that's cool but where are you spending most of your time during the week? Are you coming home and just dying on the couch after you get home from work? Or do you go and do, you can go on the internet and learn or paint or spend time in the studio, maybe two, three hours at the most in the evenings doing, doing what you want to do to make sure that's what you want to do. 
you know. Absolutely. But. That's what's about. That's what I was getting ready to say. Is turn, turn the uh, you know Xbox and and uh, PS4 off. Turn the TV off and work on on your pursuit. Work on your dream because it is possible. The dreams can come true, but no one's going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself, and you've got to put the work in. And you have to implement. You can learn all this stuff, but you have to implement. Okay, that's enough lecturing. I think we've about <laughs> wrapped up here. Uh, Diane, you got any announcements, uh, achievements for this week you want to share with our listeners? Um, well, I did set up a new um, page on uh, Facebook. So I'm just starting it out, but it's basically for artists that do um, artwork um, related to nature and connecting with nature lovers. <laughs> so I'm trying to see if I can get that all going. So it's um, paint nature. Um, <laughs> forgotten now what it is. Paint nature connect is the name of the page on Facebook. Okay. So if anybody's interested, stop by. <laughs> paint nature <laughs> what connect? Connect, yeah. Okay. I'll put a I'll put a link to it on our uh, uh, talk art podcast page. <laughs> you know, when I when I put the notes up for recommended videos for next week, I'll uh, under you know I always put the previous week's recording a link to previous week's recording underneath of that i'll put the link to your your facebook so our listeners can uh, can catch that so folks can look look forward to that within the uh yeah before the week is out uh constance and so you you didn't you say you didn't have anything special going on you're just creating no. art right you just work yeah, on <laughs> painting painting and drawing good Okay. Uh, one thing I've noticed about the oil paintings is you have to let them dry before you can post them for sale. <laughs> I don't like that. I've got used to the um, pastels. They don't have to be, they don't have a drying stage. You know? Leave it up to Cos to say something to Wacky. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh well, my you, gosh, you they have post, to dry before I can yeah, post You them. can post them. You just have to have a, a misnomer or whatever in there to tell them that you cannot ship it until it's they dry. They are dry. <laughs> so that's how you can get around that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody would, would by the time they received it in the mail, it'd be all mushed up. And I said, I thought this was a reference. That would not be good. Art. It looks like yeah. an abstract to me. <laughs> oh, right. Well, the only thing that I've got coming up here, if, if I know we have listeners worldwide, so if any of our listeners are over in, um, let's see, and uh, in Barcelona, and the uh, I'm not even going to begin to say to say the address, and I'll have to post that on the on the uh, page. But it's uh, I'm in the, participating in an exhibition with the Art Box Projects uh, folks in Barcelona, the 18th through the 22nd of March provided a coronavirus doesn't cancel it out. They keep uh, uh, sending notices out to us. That it's still going on as far as they know, but at the last minute they could pull it. <laughs> that's that's something, such a scary thing. Yeah, that's something we can't control, you know. And also the art box folks are going to exhibit my art for the entire month of March and the entire month of April in their art box gallery in Zurich, Switzerland. So if any of our listeners who are in the uh, Zurich, Switzerland area, pop in and see my art. It's going to be on there uh, digitally on their uh, eight foot tall digital screens, flat screens, which is really wonderful. It's the same thing they used in, uh, in uh, during Art Basel in uh, Miami this last December. And I was also exhibited in October uh, in the Zurich, uh, Switzerland. So um, check it out. <laughs> I'm getting out there. I'm now, I can say I'm an internationally exhibited artist now. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me, Diane and Constance. Bye-bye, Diane. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Bye, Constance. Good night, Diane. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you so much for listening, and hopefully you're tuned in next time. Bye.
The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.